never had pinball made such a, a transition. And so we said, you know, we have to get everything right because there's no second chance. So it's got to be right. So that means we have to pick a theme that there's no questions, there's no, you know, we feel that they're going to perceive it well. We had a Star Wars license. And we said, let's, you know, Star Wars is a natural. Um, but the Star Wars guys weren't coming out for quite a while. And they said, no, no, you don't come out before us. You come out when we come out. So then our, our second choice is a couple of years prior, we had had a game during the bad times that was incredibly successful and well-received, Attack from Mars, Brian Eddy's game. We decided in a meeting that if we wanted to get a Pinball 2000 game out fast, we better not go too many times around the loop designing the game. Let's do a sequel where we know a lot of the properties and elements and we can do it much more quickly. And, you know, Attack from Mars was just a huge game for us. It, it had not run too long before this. And um, we didn't sell nearly enough of them into the market. We cut it short. Um, that, that's a whole other story on how they have to guess how many games to release because it's very expensive to start and stop our production line. And it was that game was underproduced by a dramatic amount. Um, very strong game, very long legs, very good theme, a lot of things to grasp. I think just based on the way the designers were lined up for their different projects and the track record um, of George being able to really grab the reins and run, we proposed that you know we should do Revenge from Mars and George should do the game. Um, this caused a major problem, particularly, uh, probably mostly in George's mind. Uh, Attack from Mars wasn't George's game, it was Brian Eddy's. It's a delicate thing to say, you know, you know, you, you designed the sequel to his game. You know, it's something that's going to cause hard feelings and, and cause issues. And I think, or even George had hesitations, um, I didn't know instantly, but I found out later, Brian was very upset. He was very, very upset that, you know, somebody was sequeling his game and it wasn't him. Um, Brian had left us before that to go over to Midway to do video games. And so he, you know, wasn't available to do it. And, and we had to do whatever we could, any way we could. And, uh, and I didn't feel that that should affect the decision. We did bring him into the project. Um, we brought him onto the team. He came to team meetings, worked as an advisor that was smoothed over somewhat. So now I've got the, the father, if you will, and his partner, Lyman Sheets, uh, guys, the guys that made Attack from Mars are both on this project. Lyman as the head game programmer, Brian as the consultant on, you know, the, the, the keeper of the attack flame, the arbiter of quality, if you will on what was acceptable in, in the world of these Martians that he had created, etc. So it was, for me, it was between a rock and a hard place because I, I would crank ideas and every idea had to pass muster. There were times when they would say to me, oh no, that, that would never happen in this world or that, no, that's not how that would work. And I would say, okay, all right, on to the next thing, you know. But I think, I think for the better, for the, for the good of the project, I just kind of like subjugated that part of me and said, okay, all right, we'll, we'll work with it. Okay, this is a uh, sketch that I, I basically made this for myself just to begin thinking about where things would go and, and to try to integrate the video with some of the, the three-dimensional architecture of the play field. Uh, you can see that I sketched a line here, uh, which is roughly where the plane of the video would be and what I was trying to do was was get an idea if I for example if I put this gun turret on this ramp I put the city back here how would they relate relative to somebody standing out here looking at the play field through this plane where which is where the video would appear projected I didn't have the luxury to be able to go back and 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 do a lot of white woods and, and try a lot of things so I I did some things which I, I'm very comfortable with that I've done many times. The crossing ramp situation, a couple of orbit shots. I kept the Martians here from the original attack from Mars. 
I also, uh, this, this particular little sketch that I made here for myself, uh, you can see I begin to, to uh, lay out the, uh, what ended up being the, the catch and the launch ramp. Um, so this represents a saucer projected in space and the ball would go up the ramp, the ramp lifts up, the ball would go up the ramp, um, strike this clear plexiglass panel, uh, which would, the, the panel would rock back. Here's a side view of a micro switch, pivot point for the panel. So the ball would strike back, fall into this trough, uh, and then roll back to the player. Now you can see that here. The ball would go up, strike the panel, panel is represented by these uh, striated lines which imply that the panel moves back. The ball falls into this catch, comes down this rail, and returns to the player. Um, also began thinking about uh, the notion of, uh, this is something I never really got to try, uh, but I wanted to have a three-dimensional molded city that was backlit to, um, uh, in colors that would complement the colors that we could actually reproduce in video and project onto the surface because I wanted, to me, Pinball 2000, the entire system, the magic was about uh, creating dynamic movable objects, uh, but all of those dynamic movable objects needed to be in the, needed to live in the, in the real world. So I, I tried really hard to uh, I think I mentioned this in the er interview earlier, I didn't want to see any edges on my monitor. And in my game, um, in contrast to, uh, for example, Star Wars, in my game, we never ever show you the edges of the monitor. Uh, the movies are displayed in framed edges here uh, in the center of the screen. We never ever go to the edge of the monitor because I think that the minute that you see the perimeter of the monitor, then what happens is that we break the fiction. This is uh, something which I, I am certain had Pinball 2000 survived and had we uh, been able to evolve the technology and the system, I think that would have reached uh, a very, very high, high level of art in, in, um, in further implementations. If you saw Wizard Blocks, um, I think Pat concurred with me that, that the magic was in preserving the, the illusion that those elements lived on the play field. Um, I think, I think um, uh, John Papaduke in his Star Wars design um, was less concerned with that and um, he felt that I think that, that people would always know it was um, video merged with three-dimensional things because we would never achieve that.